Hi everyone, Blender 4.3 is now available and this is a massive update, bringing all kinds of new features for geometry nodes, interface changes, brush assets, grease pencils being redesigned, performance improvements, lots of like color and tone mapping type stuff, light linking, there's really a lot to go over. So as is tradition on this channel, I will talk you through the feature release page so you don't have to read it yourself. But alongside this video, Blender does also do their own breakdown videos. There's some hosted by Jonathan Lampel as well as a collection of other community members. So once you're done with this video, if you want to get a bit more in depth with the new features, then I recommend checking them out. But otherwise, let's just get straight into it. So Blender 4.3, a stroke of genius, brush assets, faster sculpting, a revolutionized grease pencil and more, Blender 4.3 has got you covered. Scrolling down, we'll pass the splash screen and the release overview video with Jonathan Lampel there from ZG Cookie. Again, definitely worth watching. They explain the features with the help of Harry Blends, who does like a fantastic interpretation of uh, showing how the geometry nodes work. Christopher 3D, another YouTuber, and AD Burrows from Creative Shrimp, who are all like really great people. So Eevee, it's real time for light linking. So light linking and shadow linking are now available in Eevee and not just cycles, which is great. If you don't know, it allows you to have really great control over which mesh objects are affected by which light objects. So if you want to have certain light objects only affecting certain parts of the scene, maybe it's a character, maybe it's an environment piece, then that's really easy to do. That's what light linking's for. So it's great now that it's here for Eevee as well as cycles. So more control than ever before with light linking, lights can be set to affect only specific objects in the scene. Shadow linking additional gives control over which objects act as shadow blockers for a light. This is now feature parity with cycles. So hopefully when it says feature parity, it means that if you're swapping between the renderers, then the light linking settings will apply in both. So if you set it up in one engine, then it should work in another. I haven't checked that, but I, I'm guessing that's what they mean by parity. So moving on to shaders, metal to the pedal. The new metallic BSDF node has been added to the shader editor. This new node exposes existing but hard to access metallic material configurations in a small node. So in this node, you get a choice between two different configurations. You have the F82 tint, which allows you to give specific RGB color values to change the color of the metal. And then there's the conductor Fresnel, which requires you to use specific index of refraction values to get a color. So it's far more accurate, it's more realistic, but it's a bit harder to control. As they put it, this method is more complex to use, requiring IOR and extinction coefficients per color channel as inputs. However, it can produce subtly more accurate results for real world metals, previously achievable only through custom OSL scripts. Open shader language. Eevee doesn't have support for the conductor Fresnel type, so if you're swapping between the render engines, it will internally remap the IOR values to colors and use it with the F82 tint version. So there's not a lot different with this because the F82 tint method is essentially what we're already using in the principal BSDF shader, but it just makes it easier to use if you're making metallic specific objects. Now there's a specific product of mine called Modular Metals that I need to remake at some point or do a really like wide sweeping update for, so I'll be looking into this when I get around to that. Now make some gap or noise. So this is a new type of generated or procedural texture node in the shader editor that seems to have a lot of control behind it because you can do all kinds of like band patterns as it's showing on the screen something more cloth like which is great two versions of the texture being combined together so you can do procedural cloth like really easily now but I've also seen demonstrations of using one version of the texture for doing like ripples of sand so it's really opening up a wide range of possibilities for new types of proc materials. Now for compositing EV passes are now available for interactive compositing. Now this this is fantastic for stylized rendering. So this is multi-pass compositing lets you create complex NPR setups, NPR meaning non-photorealistic, and effects directly in the 3D viewport. So let's check this out. So running the compositor in real time, they can modify the different passes, combine them in creative ways to create different kinds of post effects. So you can get that immediate visual feedback from the 3D viewport, which is brilliant because it means you can design your own effects live. I imagine you'd also be able to share these uh, compositing node trees as well and kind of link them into new files. So I can imagine people doing animated shorts, but they invent their own post effects this way with the EV rendering engine. And I just think it's great, like having all this control. There are a few more compositor changes you can read here. Now it gives us a break in the page here, Blender Extended. This is referring to the extensions platform, which we've briefly spoken about in the past. So the extensions platform is a still new feature. It's a website that's also integrated into Blender now, optionally, where you can download and automatically receive updates from some of your favorite add-ons. So some are managed by Blender themselves and some are uploaded by members of the community. It has to go through a review process, but it basically means that some of these really popular and frequently downloaded add-ons are just easy to stay on track with now. It also supports themes as well as add-ons. Okay, so if you do UV editing and texture painting, this one will be quite interesting for you. So there's a new minimum stretch method for unwrapping. 
which compared to previous methods produces less distortion for your islands when they're projected onto the UV map. This is ideal for organic shapes. This uses the slim algorithm, meaning scalable local injective mappings, and there's a research publication you can read into if you're a bit more technically minded. It can now be found under the unwrap menu and then minimum stretch. And we can see a comparison here between the new slim, conformal, and angle based, which is the default. So going from angle based to slim, you can see how it's a bit more of a natural projection there. For another break in the page, they say it's studio friendly thanks to the portable installation, new environment variables, custom bundling of extensions. Blender 4.3 is easier than ever to integrate into studio pipelines. So the portable installation is interesting. You can set Blender up so it doesn't read from like the user app data to get add-ons and configurations. If you put a portable folder in the Blender directory to keep it all very localized, then it will effectively read from that instead. So you can put all your add-ons and configs in there, which makes it really handy. So if you're working from like a shared storage space, you only need to update one version of Blender rather than like reinstall it on everyone's machines. But th there's more you can do with that, but that's just an example. You click through here to the page deploying Blender in production, and it will give you more information here about bundling extensions, if that's something you want to use, startup scripts, application templates, and more. Okay, so geometry nodes is massive in this update. I doubt we'll be able to go over absolutely everything, but we'll see what we can do. So there's a for each element zone, gizmos. Gizmos are, by the way, these uh, control mechanisms. Support for grease pencil in the way that grease pencils can now be interpreted as curves in the geometry nodes. So whereas before in geo nodes, you could generate curves, place things on them, modify them, etc. You can now do that with grease pencil strokes by means of interpreting them as curves. Bakes can now be packed into the blend files, the custom warnings you can add, geometry nodes, names can be generated and other new nodes and Zimon Thomas has offered a delightful sneak peek into the abundance of geo goodies packed in this blender update so this is what i mean about the blender dev team making educational content to go along with this update this is a nearly half an hour video by Simon, who's just a you know really great teacher and is absolutely excellent at this stuff if you watched one of my previous videos about the project gold project by the blender studio and how they made this brush painting add-on available i mentioned that there was a workshop made to teach people how to use that that was also done by simon as well so massive props to them for doing this effortless iteration with for each element so the for each zone is something that people have been waiting for for a long time it's a new type of loop zone and it will make it easy to iterate over elements of a geometry in parallel making repetitive processes a breeze to handle so really if you want to do an operation to every object you only need to do it for one inside of the zone you can also now add gizmos to node groups. Now this is brilliant because this fundamentally replaces the need for add-ons in a lot of cases. I'll explain that. But first of all, this means you can edit the inputs to a node tree right in the 3D viewport. No need to dive into the node editor or modifier stack. It's a game changer for more intuitive and hands-on experience. So you can see here, once something's been dragged in, interacting with gizmos to change the results, and we have the exposed parameters on the modifier stack there. But the node interaction, you can see how the gizmo is changing the values in the node tree. So what I mean about effectively replacing some add-ons, it's been the case a lot in the past where there's a specific effect or a style or just a little tool in Blender that requires a piece of interaction, like an interaction mechanism, whether it's a button or a gizmo in this case, that requires like a whole add-on to be made just to get that one piece of interaction because Blender wasn't so great in terms of letting artists make tools in the past. So the reason why this is great is because this interaction will go a long way. Gizmos can be creatively used to affect different types of values and in that way they subvert the need for custom Python based tools to be written just to get a relatively simple operation done. So it's really helping to make geometry nodes more usable in that way. Although built-in nodes aren't using this power yet, the future looks bright. Advanced users will benefit now and soon everyone will enjoy Blender's growing procedural capabilities. Okay now geometry name introducing the set geometry name node. Again, this is something that might typically require the help of Python in the past. A new node designed to enhance your workflow. This node allows for the easy assignment of names to geometries that are generated with automatic initialization based on object and collection names. So that's really cool to see. So as I said, geometry nodes now meets grease pencil. Geometry nodes now work smoothly with grease pencil data, breaking it down into layers with curves and custom attributes. Updated nodes can now handle grease pencil data seamlessly, processing each layer separately. So this cat is drawn using grease pencil strokes. It's converted to a mesh using geometry nodes to get a claymation effect. So that's a really interesting use case because it hasn't actually been modeled. So that's kind of funky. I did a video a while back called like a new way to model in Blender or something like that, speaking about SDF modeling. And in that video, I mentioned how there are so many different ways to generate mesh content in Blender. But like there's no one single way or one best way. And I didn't consider that before. So it's interesting seeing how like fundamentally simple things like accessing grease pencil 
pencil and geometry nodes can just open the way to a wide range of new tools and techniques. And here we can see the integration of geometry nodes with grease pencil. So they've got an effect going on in the modifier stack over here. And as they modify the noise value, you can see how it affects the strokes. So again, this is from Project Gold. I've done a video about that previously. Quite a complicated project, but very impressive. New utility nodes. So these are a bit more geeky. We've got hash value, integer math, and matrix determinant. And then to help with usability and just giving more information to the users of your tools, we have the warning node, which comes with three different categories. So info, warning, and error. So this will add information to the node groups. And as I mentioned before, baked data can now be packed into the blend file, which means it can be easily transferred from one user to another. And of course, there's a bit more. So convert grease pencil to curves. That's the main interaction point there. You can take grease pencil as an input, convert it to curves, and then even convert that back to grease pencil after the fact, which means you can generate grease pencil curves from nothing, really. You don't have to paint them out. There's a merge layers node for grease pencil layers, improved node timings for better accuracy. So that's great for the optimization nerds out there. The skip checkbox is now hidden in simulation zone which is something people were apparently misclicking all the time. Sculpt mask made accessible in the node tools. And there's a variety of community made projects you can take a look at. Let's look at one by Ashley showing neural patterns. Very, very cool indeed. But yeah, it is being a bit destroyed by the compression, but still, I think it's really cool. If you want to read up a bit more about where Geometry Nodes is heading, then there's a link to a blog post here as well, which you can peruse in your own time. Here's a call to action for donating to Blender. I donate monthly. I encourage you to as well. They're actually doing a bit of a push at the moment to try and encourage more people to sign up. They say join the 2% because apparently only 2% of people donate, which to be fair is still quite a lot when you think about like the number of people downloading and using Blender, but it could be more. Okay, so we've been speaking about Grease Pencil in conjunction with Geometry Nodes, but the Grease Pencil engine itself has been completely rewritten to improve performance and remove limitations. So layers in Grease Pencil can now be organized into groups, which is great because if you're doing really complex scenes, 2D or 2D slash 3D scenes with Grease Pencil, it really helps to have the extra organization. They allow for easy toggling of visibility, locking and onion skinning for all the layers in the group. And additionally, they can be color coded. Yay, just like collections. A new fill gradient tool is here which can be found in edit mode below the interpolation tool. So you can see how you can draw out a line to describe the gradient, pretty similar to like 2D software's Affinity, Photoshop, whatever. So the eraser has also been improved. This is a really impressive one because before the eraser would just like remove points or edges that had already been made with a grease pencil. But this time it can creatively make points as it's erasing. So it looks smoother effectively, but you've got different options for doing this. So you can see how it's cutting straight through the paint areas. There's different options, but quite impressively, there's a smooth eraser here which looks really clean. So it's acting much more like a proper digital paint set rather than like an editing tool, if that makes sense. All Blender releases this year aligned with the VFX reference platform 2024. This is a note about trying to make things easy and accessible for like studio pipelines. And now to another pretty big change, brushes. So brushes are now assets, which seemed like a natural step, like a natural progression of the asset system. It means things can be shared and made consistent across projects as well. So say you have a large library of different brushes or custom brushes, just like any other asset library, you'll be able to access them in any Blender project you like. So with over 100 default brushes and an improved interface, Blender 4.3's new brush workflow makes management, customization, and sharing across projects easier than ever. And I love the custom thumbnails that have been made for this. So these are from the mesh sculpt mode. It looks far more clean, more professional now, and it describes the function of the brushes very well. So as well as the asset browser, there's an asset shelf, which you'll be able to use to access the brushes easily. There are a few ways to get into that, but like we said, it makes it easy for them to be marked as an asset and then shared with other people. As for the user interface, this is also a pretty big change, especially for people that are used to the subdivided style of the interface in Blender, how we can just drag things out from a corner and split it into new areas. It's actually quite interesting. A lot of people that are new to Blender have trouble getting used to that to start with because it is pretty unique in terms of software design, but it's also extremely powerful. Now that power has been extended. You can drag areas of the interface into other areas and it will effectively move and split those. You can still do what we would do before with the splitting and the collapsing, but it also depends how far you drag the mouse cursor after you've begun clicking on a corner. They explain it quite well in the overview video by Jonathan Lampel, but also it's quite easy to now drag parts of the interface out of Blender and turn them into new windows. So what else? Tooltips now provide more information than before. Nice. To improve accessibility, tooltips now have dedicated style settings for font size, weight, and shadows. So that's great for accessibility and clarity. There's now an option here to have highlights appear around the interface 
interface editor that you're hovering over and the color for these things can be changed in the theme settings. Now there's been quite a lot in the way of user interface as you can see I'm not going to read through all of them but these are the smaller changes. I say smaller it depends what you use it for quite often in these compilation areas there's like one or two features that people really appreciate that are bigger than they appear. So here's one when you're using the file browser the back and forth mouse buttons will actually take you back and forth rather than undoing. There's better padding all over the place so that's just kind of cleaning up the interface quite a lot. The layout of the color picker has changed as well preventing tooltips from changing size on zoom I appreciate that one and of course much more. Okay Blender 4.3 runs natively in Windows on ARM or ARM depending on how you want to say it thanks to integration by Qualcomm which recently joined the development fund so that's great. Now for the video sequence editor there have been some improvements. Great it's very very slowly getting more and more capable. So connected strips they can be connected for easy transformation you can hold alt to select and transform only one strip while keeping the connection and quickly toggle the connection using control alt and c. When you're dragging things around in the sequencer preview it now supports snapping so that's great for aligning the graphics work and there have been a suite of performance improvements. I'm surprised how much area they cover in Blender with these performance improvements and even more additions there to the sequencer. So there are some smaller things thumbnails and strips are now enabled by default, uh, show toolbars by default, support for subframe adjustments in terms of sound and yeah. Now one thing I appreciate is that they do very often let you download the actual demo file for the splash screen so you can see that's here available with the button and near the bottom of this update page and finally we are reaching the end so here are some of the things that got left out from having a bigger announcement we've got stuff to do with Vulkan, modifiers, animation, USD, Core Blender, GLTF, Cycles Engine, Python API and the breaking changes that come along with that. I imagine that a lot of my stuff is going to break now so now that there's a new form of interface splitting that means that modular workspaces one of my add-ons is probably broken so just keep that in mind I'll need to go and review that and extra stuff for Eevee in the text editor and oh the best Best feature of 4.3. Wrap around is now enabled by default in the text editor. Yes. All right, so obviously consider subscribing to the dev fund. If you made it this far through the video, show me by putting some kind of emoji in the comments. Let's do a heart. We love a heart. Tell me what you liked from this update. What do you want to try out? What do you think was missing from this one? I know people have a lot of opinions. And for myself, of course, I make my own resources and add-ons for Blender. If you want to check them out, you can find them at codisol.online slash store. The two most recent ones and some of the best things I've made is the Afterglow product. Really happy with that. Still got so many ideas. Looking forward to getting back into it. You can check out my crash course on it as well. And a collaboration tool with my friend Chris, the Hex at all for turning any non-seamless texture into a seamless material especially for PBR workflows we have a really clever way of using the height data to blend between materials I think we really knocked it out of the park with that one so check it out if you're interested and of course you can support me on Patreon or sign up as a YouTube member so yeah thanks for watching have a fantastic day everyone and I will see you next time